So uh, <laughs> today is a, an interesting day. Probably you know my family situation. Uh, if you if you know me personally, but uh, th that seems to have escalated to the point where it's very current at the moment. This spirit of division, I would say, like it, I I would say it's been attacking me personally for a long time now, and like the spirit of doubt that we talked about the other day, I just don't think we talk about it enough. Like if you actually look. Like, like it's something you can observe from the church right if you look at different portions of everybody who calls themselves the church like of christ whatever that looks like there is massive division is there not people divide over doctrine and that's good and that's what i meant earlier when i said there are times where this division needs to happen but also if you look at galatians 5 which is a key um, passage for this there is a a, a, a negative spiritual uh, and, and probably nefarious way of dividing as well and so it, I, th I think as with everything with the Lord there's a tension you don't want to go too far one way you don't want to go too far the other way you need to walk in the middle kind of thing you know on that knife edge really the tension between law and grace, for example, or whatever else, right? So, having said that, um, I think what we should probably do is look at that passage in Galatians 5. Um, it's, a, it's a passage about walking in the spirit and not the flesh. But these are the works of the flesh, flesh made manifest, and in that... Uh, Paul talks about variants, emulations, um, quarrelling, um, what else? Uh, divisions, obviously, dissensions, which are, uh, the, the actual definition of dissension is literally, you know, coming... I'll, I'll give it to you, hang on, just so we can actually... Dissension meaning exactly disagreement that leads to discord. Uh, and in quotes, it says, these issues caused bitter dissension in the party. Uh, like as an, an, as an example of how it's used. And I think that's exactly what happens. Uh, hang on, I've lost you. Uh, that's what, exactly what happens when um, we discuss things in the church often. One person will be adamant about something theological or whatever that person doesn't agree with you it starts off cordially and then all of a sudden people escalate things the flesh gets involved right and then all those underlying issues uh pool together to make something erupt on both parties and it kind of escalates well i don't think this and you don't think that and blah, 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 you know and it just kind of like escalates in level and i think that's really when division is a become sinful because you're well it's a it's a work of the flesh it's a manifestation of the flesh which as we know in our church at least that's a, a, a to do with evil spirits right and um even though it has various names dissent, dissension division uh quarreling that leads to jealousy or whatever it says you know that there's it ultimately always comes down to pride that division like that this is why i've always said it's the most evil of all spirits i mean it, it just you know whether it's the love of money or status or just simply you have to be right it always comes down to pride doesn't it if you if you boil it right down to the strong man but there are lots of other i guess sub lieutenants um so yeah uh am i still can you still hear me yeah yeah. yeah yeah just checking um so anyway um i think the first main scripture i would like to bring other than that galatians 5 pa five passage which obviously clearly says that it's sinful to do that like it literally says anyone doing that won't inherit the kingdom of god right so that's a fearful thing isn't it i don't know because uh, i don't know about you but i tend to get in the flesh fairly easily when it comes to being offended and then dividing over things right but sometimes that's a good thing and i'll tell you 
that tension needs to be met because on the flip side the lord jesus christ said in um well it's luke where is it hang on so in luke 12 uh the lord is basically talking about um, how a father shall be divided against the son, the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, the daughter against the mother, blah, blah, blah. But the Lord is the instigator of that. He came not to bring peace, but a sword. He came to divide families, which most, you know, progressive Christians would be horrified at, right? I mean, you know, you know to, for, to say that the Lord, who loves everybody, right, is actually going out there to make everybody who is in this valley of decision... That, that, you know, walking through the shadow of death, through this valley, right? And everybody's been presented in a moment-by-moment -moment, um, fashion with how they're going to respond to something. And quite potentially, that response could either continue your walk with the Lord or, or dismay him and even blaspheme him, potentially, right? On a moment-to-moment -moment basis, like as you're presented more and more with... Um, the trials and tests and tribulations, whatever that come your way and how you respond to that. Um, we are always kind of being pushed, I guess, to take a choice. Hi, Lizette. God bless you. To take okay. a choice of how we are going to respond to this. And that, um, I guess, holy division, because Jesus wants us to choose him over the world, right? Uh, how much more attractive is the world sometimes than, you know, the way of holiness, which looks prickly and brambly and not that inviting sometimes. It looks like a crown of thorns rather than a gold crown, right? And that's sometimes just not what you're looking for, uh, especially if you are already a broken, hurting person that just needs comforting or something the last thing you want to hear is well you've got to pick up your cross and then deny your flesh right uh but us, ultimately that's what jesus is asking of his disciples um so with that in mind the lord literally is activating a division he's trying to divide through choice well what what from our point of view is choice who is going to go his way and who's going to go the way of the devil? Who's going to take the wide path that leads to destruction and who's going to take that narrow path that only a few ever find, right? And so if you want to, um, on a moment-to-moment, -moment, listen to his spirit and go that narrow path, ultimately it does mean you are going to divide from people that you actually really don't want to divide with because they've made the different choice the opposite choice they have chosen the world for example and you haven't right and that is always going to lead at some level to conflict and we may in even in, in our lifetime we have to be ready to have that conflict uh with people who are going to take the mark of the beast literally take the mark of the beast that is a a, a very real ever presently more uh mm. Um, a what reality that's about to come. Like, Sorry? It's like, what fellowship has light with darkness? Exactly. How can yeah. two or, or, or uh, how can two even walk together unless they're in agreement? And if you're not in agreement, like if, if that person really, really doesn't want the Lord and they want their money, how are you going to walk with that person when your priorities are literally the opposite? It's literally impossible, right? And go, Miguel. That makes that makes complete sense, brother. I was, um, and uh, I'm sure that you were going to go there. And maybe I'm just once. I'm, maybe I'm jumping the gun here. But uh, what we what what what's kind of came to my mind, and I'm sure that you were going to mention this. But forgive me for jumping the gun, please. please no, no, it's fine. Um, I was thinking it's, it's 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 a much it's much more evident and much more easy to separate the waters and for us to know that the Lord really is causing because He is He is the sword that cuts the sun, isn't it? It's causing the division is part of what we expect to to deal with as we walk with Him. 
Uh, but then it comes the 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 the, uh, the the issue of the different interpretations of the Bible, and the separation or the division that comes from. Uh, you started with the, the, the interpreting and going into the flesh, but then what is true doctrine? So one step. It's, okay, we get into the flesh when we di- when we discuss or we argue about our point of view in terms of our interpretation of the Bible or doctrinal uh, um, issues. And then we've got us and the world, uh, uh, those who do not seek God. And on a, on a different instance, we've got we've got those of us who, who are trying to walk with the Lord <laughs> and being, and then those who have a different doctrine. So where do we stand there? So the division is going to happen as well for those who think or believe they are actually following the Lord. So true. And that's why we need to examine ourselves on a daily basis to see if we're still in the faith. Because you can really sincerely believe you're doing a favor to the Lord as you kill someone who's actually his prophet, right? <laughs> it literally says that in the scripture, right? So you, you, can, you can literally think you're doing the, the, like, you know, the kingdom of God like a favor by doing something that's totally anti-Christ. And that should cause us to step back with caution, with fear, examine ourselves on a daily basis. And often, look, it's all very well pointing fingers. Like, for example, what happened today, like, I totally lost my rag. And I tell you what, I got in the flesh. I just did. But it, I was pushed there, uh, you know, but ultimately I was responsible for my actions, right? And so, obviously, there has to be an apology and whatever else going on, repentance. But this is a daily thing, should be a daily thing for any of us, because ultimately, whether you know it or not, you get it wrong every day. There is a, an element about all of us that will offend the Lord on a daily basis, right? Which is the beauty of, as we listen to his spirit more and more, he shows us what he doesn't like about us so that we can see it. You cannot even see it unless he reveals it to you. Mm-hmm. And the more and more you come uh, into um, an acknowledgement of those particular spirits that are attacking you, whatever they might be, the more you understand how they attack <laughs> And also how you give in. So then you can take the thoughts captive and resist. But in this particular instance with the spirit of division, interestingly, when I talked about doubt, I really don't think there's ever a positive to to the spirit of doubt. That's always a negative evil spirit. Whereas there is this element with the spirit of division that can be inspired by holiness, right? Like there is this element that is like, it doesn't matter if the rest of the world does not believe what I, I, I believe right now. There is absolutely no way I'm going to join you in taking the mark of the beast. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so there is this element of division that is literally like, okay, you are all children of the devil. I'm on God's side right now, and I'm going to stand on this side of the line. And that might well hurt you on this side of the grave, right? You might lose your life even. Moses, go for it. I would just want to quickly testify about having to go through um, this division myself, because obviously um, recently I associated with a church that's local to me, and there were some things I knew we didn't agree with, like, for instance, the demons in the flesh issue, which I realized that in of itself probably isn't a reason why I should separate from them, because we believe the same in other areas. For instance, we agreed that we are to evangelize and all that other stuff. We believe in the gifts. However, there was another issue whereby we disagreed and it had to do with the authority um, issue of, you know, women preaching to men and teaching that. And I mean, the temp- I had the temptation to just say, well, it's, you know, maybe I should just let, let, let that slide as well. But then I knew that I knew deep down that the right thing for me to do was to come separate from them. Because you know? that, that is something that's unacceptable. It isn't something where we can just agree to disagree. It's, no, you know, you need to repent. This is unbiblical. So I just wanted to testify that because there's... That's good. Because it, it has to do with what you said. There's a division that is righteous and of the Lord, whereby we have to obey the Lord and come separate. And there's another division that's of the devil and it's unnecessary. We can still be at peace. It's not a big deal. Well, look, I mean, I would say that if you if you have experience that matches Scripture 
that that what's written in scripture and you also have the experience of it and you know the power behind it as well you can pretty much stand firm on what's going on and just <sighs> even if everybody else thinks you're wrong you know it's right it's being it's being led by the spirit and not by self or demons it's true yeah and one of the gifts of the spirit as well is discernment of spirits and I don't think the church talks about that enough. And I think that would make a great Bible study, by the way. But in this particular case, the discernment of spirits in this, it, when when you can have like it go one way or another, like it could, the source could be holiness or it could be demonic. And even w w when when a uh, when a spirit could come from both directions like that, you need even more discernment to actually know what the right way to go is and. I, I do believe communication is key with the spirit of division. Like you have to know where that other person is coming from totally in order to fully make um, a commitment either for or against. Right. So to so speak quick to listen. Yes. To listen to each other, unless that person is not listening to you, That's in which case, in which case there's the, the, there's already that division there because there needs to be this, um, I guess, respect to actually hear each other's point of view if there is something to contend about, right? Go for it, Miguel. Uh, brother, I was just thinking, it's, I, I usually try to put myself in, 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 the, in the place of women because they many times, and I've got, you know, they feel led to share, to, to witness, and many times they feel that I've, they've done enough study and they've gone through the Bible. They've had revelation. Therefore, they must share what they've, what the Holy Spirit has told them, has show them. And uh, many times it comes overboard and expresses itself as wanting to take to be uh, uh, in in a in a position of ministry of ministering to men. And I I I think I'm talking for myself. I had no father growing up, right? So my father was very absent. And in a sense, I almost wish, you know, I wish that the, the, that the word would give women the, 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 the authority and a place to preach. I really do. They do have a place to preach. But, but I know, I know. But you know, you know what we're I'm saying, you know, not, not the, in the preaching to man. And, you know, we're talking about what, you know, what, why the issue is here and that made Moses become, uh, you know, uh, wanting to go according to scripture right but, but but the thing is i wish they could so it's never when when men or women say women shouldn't preach it's it's i wish they could feel the hearts of those who say that and that really would like that women were women were allowed but i mean paul clarifies that particular thing if you want to talk about that for a second paul pl mm -hmm. cl clarifies that about literally saying eve was deceived right and this is this is exactly what I'm saying. Like we we're trying to discern spirits here, and that's a key thing, right? Like whatever Paul meant the weaker vessel to be, like obviously it's physical because like most women are smaller than <coughs> most men, right? Uh, it, uh, like literally physically cannot lift the same amount, blah blah blah. Weaker in that sense, right? But also there is this spiritual, I guess, handicap in a way that women have that comes from Eve that Paul listed literally in scripture that, that about this I, I guess tendency to to be deceived in a way that men aren't basically and like it's not that their testimony is or, or what they know is less valuable it's just that there has to be that um in the church at least that the the authority that the lord that the i guess if for want of a better word hierarchy that the lord is um you know made in terms of the church uh, as to how things need to be run when it's not given uh a, like that credence uh, that it needs to have you ha just have total pandemonium in in like the literal sense of the word where literal demons start to take the authority rather than all of us are being led by spirits in some kind of way. Is it the Holy Spirit or is it the other spirits of the flesh? Mm -hmm. A lot of the time it's the other spirits of the flesh. Even when men are preaching, that happens, right? But it just, for, for whatever reason, for a mystery I don't even really understand myself, it tends to be men who see the 
discerning of the spirits more than women and that's just a fact right I, I don't know it's probably unpopular but it's just the way it is you can kind of prove it with scripture as well right but ultimately women do have that place in a certain scenario right where they can teach and preach and that that is a, also a fact right Lizette wants to say something go for it yeah. Can I just share really quick? I guess I understand where Miguel's coming from because I struggle with that. Like, you know, sometimes they want me to speak and I'm like, no, no, no I'm going to hell back because I can't, you know, but my pastor found a way in order for us women to participate, not necessarily to preach on the pulpit, but to maybe be the Bible study like you guys are doing. Sometimes he lets us, I've done it a couple of times that he lets me leave, but with his notes. You know, I'm like reading the notes and it's I'm under him still. You know, he sure. tells me, OK, this is what you're going to say. And do you just you know, you just lead it like uh, you make the questions. And like when it's like, you know, when it's both men and women small group, you know, sometimes the women feel comfortable to hear other voices. And that's why he does it like that. Like there's a group of us. Yeah. It's about four or five men and two women. And we take turns leading like small groups and yeah. And they back me up and they give me feedback and they're like, it's so good and whatever, mm -hmm. but we only do it in that set, not in like, yeah. Per theory. Personally, I'm yeah. also <laughs> fine with that scenario. It really, I, I think mm -hmm. the key is the, the key word with this it, on this issue. I don't know whether, I guess this is related to this, the topic, the spirit of division, but, um, the key word is assertion. I think that's really where the issue is. It's like yeah. when, when that uh, female basically decides to like take control and and start lecturing everybody else because they know better or whatever, right? There, there is an, there's like a subtle spirit behind it that I think um, I'm becoming more and more aware of as time goes on, and I think other men who love God are becoming more and more aware of that when that spirit starts to speak like it, it's almost like you prick your ears up and you're you're kind of like okay this could go either way and and there's an attitude to it there's a because we're all broken people the world is very broken it, it it's very easy for um whatever is in the flesh to manifest in a way that we we can't actually see it where we are actually thinking we're being right you know what i mean and so i think that again it's the actual discernment of the spirit behind it rather than the scenario you're talking about like i've been in the scenarios you're talking about and i've usually been fine with it um but i've also been in that scenario where there has been this like lady who feels like she's just got this platform where she just wants to start taking over and going beyond what was actually like granted does that make sense and so yeah i mean it's a tricky one people do divide over it like moses did with his church right but whether the dividing was righteous or not like i guess we're all going to find out on judgment day but it really does um highlight just how fragile and sensitive the whole thing is i mean this is a major thing i would say the church divides over what what we're talking about now like women um preaching or speaking or whatever leading in the ch in a church environment this is a big deal right uh, i believe the whole church is under constant temptation to division Surely, because I, I, I stay is I stay. We're, I mean, I discussed this with Chris. Remember about the sin nature, mm -hmm. and we, we, you know, we, you know, what came to mind is this: the sin nature is a state of being in constant temptation. That is your sin nature. You're constantly tempted to divide. Constantly, yeah. I mean, well, obviously Jesus was tempted, but didn't give in if you know what i mean like we 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 already yeah. we already have something that, yeah. in us we already have something in us that has already an agreement with darkness you know yeah. and that's yeah. really where yeah. the, the the thing is the temptation has power because of that like yeah. satan does actually have something in us 
Mm-hmm. You know, whereas like for Christ, nothing could stick because he was totally pure, right? Because it, it, it was external. It, was not it, it wasn't in him. Yeah, exactly. But it, that wasn't just the reason. I, I don't think it, it was just the reason. Like, he was tempted in every way, and that had to have some sort of power to it. You know, obviously, when you've been fasting for 40 days, and you're, you haven't eaten for ages, and then suddenly there's, like, a wafting smell of, like, fresh bread coming your way, and then Satan basically just says, look, you're the son of God. You can literally turn that stone into bread that's all you have to do like don't you remember the smell you know like i I actually like that that they say he was tempted in every way that we are yeah but didn't sin that's what i like about it externally by everything that we are tempted by right (laughs) and which means which means if you go to him what was who what 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 is defined in the bible that jesus was tempted by satan go on miguel I was thinking about, yeah, what I'm, t- I'm thinking about in terms of total atonement, right? And when, Brother David, when you mentioned that Jesus was, was tempted externally, uh, if, the, if the atonement, because we're always obviously talking about legality, right? So Satan mustn't have or can't have any legal grounds in which to make the suffering and the atonement that Jesus Christ provides for us by shedding his blood on the cross, there can't be anything left behind. So I'm not quite sure, although I really want to believe and I would love to believe, and I, that's the, what my preferred way of believing, that Jesus was just tempted externally. But if he was just tempted externally and not internally, he didn't have to go through the same things, does that in any sense diminish the, the knowing and the legality and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, the, the paying in full if he didn't have to have to struggle, obviously we say that he did not, did not have anything in him that was of the devil, obviously. But the tempting, but must we know, have felt- but we know, we, we know that what he wasn't, he didn't have anything in him because he said no guy was found in him. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't have anything yeah. he, in but him. He was he tempted. Him. But what I was trying to say is, he was tempted externally by everything that we have within. And yeah. externally, but he had, he had to go through exactly the same exactly. amount. Of the same, yeah, yeah. Exactly let, same. Let, let me tell you where I think something's missing here. Mm. You have to understand that Jesus could see the spirits we're talking about at yeah. some level that everybody else can't. Does that make sense? So uh-huh. even when he was being tempted by these things, like he so, like for example, if there's um, I don't know some. Um, lusty, buxom, you know, lipstick up, pink haired Jezebel who's like coming on to me really strongly or something. It's very clear for me now to see that that's an awful thing. Whereas back in the day when I was like a, a you know, like pseudo rock star uh, wannabe, <laughs> like uh, just looking at this was attractive, right? And so over this time since I got born again, looking at this kind of, you know, this spirit behind what was going on now i see it so clearly it might as well just have fangs and and you know snake eyes you know what i mean because i I i'm literally looking at a demon now whereas before i was looking at something that was attractive right but jesus always as far as i know saw saw this kind of uh spiritual environment that was uh pervading humanity And so even though he was tempted in the ways that we were externally, it was always abhorrent, I I imagine, right? In the same way as I'm being transformed into his likeness, I find it more and more abhorrent. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm not just talking about lusty spirits. I'm talking about all sorts of spirits, including the spirit of division, Mm. right? Because, or or doubt or whatever. Like I find doubt so... um, so antichrist it's so antichrist to doubt you know like you know whether jesus was on the boat kind of like why why do you have so little faith i literally just stopped an entire storm in like a second after walking on water etc and you're all still afraid you know what i mean like why do we have so little faith why do we doubt it was always obnoxious and awful to jesus and the more and more i 
know him and understand his father is in control of everything, the more I find it abhorrent and obnoxious, right? Even if it's myself that's doing it. I, I, when I look in the mirror, I'm, look, I'm, I'm seeing something I don't like because that doubt is there or whatever, right? So I think it's very different uh, scenario. Like, obviously, we know Scripture says he had nothing in him because he knew what was in men, right? And he had, like, Satan had nothing in him. You know, with the Lord, there's no darkness in him at all, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Whereas we, we, Satan has real estate in all of us. Every single person here listening has real, he has satanic real estate that needs to be conquered and sub jude basically and cast out hopefully although my personal belief is this, is that you will be doing this till your last breath fighting till your last yeah. breath you have to endure to the end right so uh that's a discipleship warp that walk that i believe is you know a, a lifelong <coughs> sanctification issue where you know the more you're transformed into his likeness the more aware of holiness you are and the more aware of sin you are. Uh, and the sin is, you. it always starts in Jerusalem, then to Samaria, then to the outer ends of the earth. If you're going to change anything, it's got to start with you. Does that make sense? There, there, there's this like parable that it has to start with you before you can even dare and go and lecture other people about it. You know what I mean? So, uh, obviously... <laughs> Jesus Christ is literally the most famous person ever. Whether you like him or not, he is the most famous person ever. Every, virtually everybody's heard of him uh, in our day and age. And yet, even though he represents perfect purity and really the, the essence of true love, sacrifice and whatever, most people don't want him and most people reject him. And that's a spiritual issue as well, because they don't understand what's in them, even if he does. Mm. Sorry, was something wanting, someone wanting to say something? Okay. So, uh, I do have other scriptures here. Let's have a look. So, the, the other thing about um, uh, uh, division is that Jesus also mentioned actually in the same passage that a kingdom divided cannot stand. He was referring to Satan's kingdom. And so he was actually, in a strange way, insinuating that Satan's kingdom is somewhat organized and isn't divided over certain issues, namely to try and damn the human race and rebel against God in the most efficient way possible. So they are united, at the very least, in those things, right? Uh, because otherwise their kingdom would have fallen down a long time ago. Whereas if you look at the actual world right now, I would say that there's a predominant power they have over humanity still. Even though everything was conquered at the cross and dealt with well, at the cross, they're right? They're definitely organized. Yeah, and that's the thing. And But then I look at the church or what most people would consider the church, right? Uh, however, that looks to most people. I mean, most people would think of the Catholic Church if you said that, right? I'm talking about... Let, let's talk about the 39,000 other denominations, right? <clears throat> Not one by one, though. Uh, the, the, you know... I don't know what we're dividing on right now, but it's not in conjunction with the prayer that Jesus made in John 17 where he said, I pray that they're all going to be one as we are one. And the reason is, is because there is such a... It, it comes back down to pride again, because this is an unholy division, obviously. This is an example of unholy division, because of, you know, Jesus literally prayed his church would be one. And surely, though, some people who are in contention are both born-again Christians, you know, there will be at least one example of that in the church, you know, hopefully. Uh, so, where was I going with that? I got distracted by an, a strange sneeze. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, mm. Dividing. Friend and connecting and disconnecting as well. I think he's having trouble for a lot. Am I disconnecting? No, no, Bren. It looks like Bren keeps on connecting and disconnecting. Ah, right. cool guy. I pray, I pray it will actually solve for him. But anyway, um, so when we look at the church, we see that this unholy division has a predominance. And this is a spirit of division, I think, that came out of Moses the other day. Uh, which is a, a an unholy, nefarious, evil spirit that wants to divide the brethren from being powerful in the Lord and strong due to this root issue of, of division, which is actually pride. It's always, it always comes down to pride, usually. If it's theological, right, you can, you can be adamant that this is the right way and if it's a secondary issue that doesn't really matter to salvation, even if you think it does, it's still something that is like causing everybody to want to separate into different factions, right? And so who really is the church? I mean, this is one of the... Chris and I were talking the other day, and um, we were just musing on the fact that, well, if 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 either of us knew what we knew today, really, like both of us would much rather just be punters in the in the in the back of some church just listening but the issue we agreed on was neither of us are that and had to i, I guess take more of a a predominant role in some sort of way just because no one else believed what we thought was the actual truth right it was very hard to find a church that we actually thought was biblical and still is it still is. I literally still don't know any other than this one. Not as not as uh, not as clear cut, at least, right? And and so for me, that's why I've always given my allegiance to this particular ministry, uh, in in a public way, even, especially when it's um, you know so frowned upon by so many other so called Christians, you know. Um, be predominantly because I, I really do actually genuinely and have always seen that this th these particular doctrines that are being propagated by this particular ministry really is the biblical ones, right? And I still have yet to have anyone who's come in contention to, to prove otherwise. And so, yes, there is a division in the, in a kind of denominational sense, but it's not really, on my part at least, through choice. It's more about... If, if you really do believe we're wrong about something, step up and contend and bring the scriptures. Because now I feel at least that I'm at a point where I know the scriptures well enough at least to contend back with you because I know where you're going to come from. And so is it pride or is it actually, no, I just know the truth and you're wrong? You know what I mean? And, and and that's what every man or woman has to actually decide for themselves. They have to hear the evidence from both uh, ends of the argument and then take it to the Lord in meditation of the scriptures themselves to actually find out whether they believe that's the truth. But ultimately, there's so many different doctrines that people disagree on now compared to even 50 years ago because every anything goes now every every you know you know it's not just that you know a woman can be a pastor or anything like a, a woman can be a dog if she wants and a pastor and she can also be like a, a man as well if she wants to you know you you can you can also be african even if you've got white skin and never been to africa it's literally like that's where we're at in the world right now if you want to be something you can be a lizard you can be a you can be a tree, and you can teach people from a Walking pulpit. The interpretation of everything. Yeah, because there's because there's no objective truth, and that's the thing. Like when people throw out the authority of scripture, um, and also just general reality, um, you know, then anything goes, right? They impose what they want scripture to mean. Right really rather than what it really means it's true go on Miguel. so we could almost say that like a, 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 a catalyst or, or an accelerator 
of such division which is already inherently in all of us because we all have what Adam gave us, the rebellion and the doubt and the willingness to divide and to be divisive and all of that, it's in us, it's our nature, accelerated by the fact that it's, give, it's more and more we've got a, 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 um, a model or a, or a, 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 a tendency or, or a zeitgeist that, that is imposing a certain idea that there is no, ac, ac, exact, there is no truth and the fact that there is no truth and everything is relative, it's an accelerator for even more division to arise. Because we, we've got, we even have, in the, the extreme that we have is Jesus is only love. Therefore, if Jesus is only love, who are you or us? Who am I to judge in, a, in any sense? So therefore, I mustn't judge. And, yeah. and it's and the, the accelerator is so well, it's so well orchestrated by Satan alongside using our rebellion, innate rebellion, that the transformation of everything into dubious, into relativity, is accelerating the process even more. It's true. The, 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 the irony as well of the truth is there is no truth, <laughs> right? It's a, it's a joke, right? Like, you're going to tell me that's the truth, are you? That there is no truth, so that's the truth. Okay, well, look. When you throw out what what is actually objective truth and you're just making up your own truth, whatever it might be, you can try and like marry it. You can make the Bible say whatever you want. You like it's some cr Christian denominations, for example, take their worldview and then fit make the Bible fit to that, basically. And you yeah. can do that if you want. But ultimately, that is, that is so evident all around us. Ultimately, when you really boil it down and you really take it literally, 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 um, uh, even if you don't take things like Genesis literally and whatever, and just the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, everybody still has a problem with it. I'm guaranteeing you that, it, like I've always said this, if the words of Jesus Christ do not trouble you and challenge you, you just didn't read it right because there should be something there that irks you and annoys you and frustrates you and challenges well, it you it deeply. doesn't annoy you it annoys what's in you well that's mm -hmm. true that is true to an extent because uh it is what dwells in the flesh but if you're in agreement with it then it is annoying you too right because you're in agreement with right. it, right exactly and that's the thing that's where we're at is like the, this lack of discernment of spirits in the church has actually uh i guess produced what we have today what the church looks like and and, and that discernment of spirits gift was never actually emphasized as much as anything else at least in the church like i don't know speaking in tongues maybe or in, in the pente pentecostal area or i don't know you know, uh, the the authority of scripture in the cessationist movement, you know, like everybody kind of like focuses on there's just this one thing with these narrow things, uh, like a horse, you know, and just like one dimensionally linear and, and forgets that everything needs to like marry and, and balance and, and be... And the thing they're tunnel visioning on is usually something to justify the sin they don't want to give up. Well, that's true. Or... or well, I mean, honestly, really, if, like, if we're going to like talk about cessationism in that way, which I believe is a sin, by the way, most people, a lot of cessationists would definitely disagree with that, right? I, to, for me to say that God cannot do miraculous things anymore is just abhorrent, let alone wrong, right? It, like as as if, as if he cannot, you know, cause people to be miraculously healed or delivered is just oh that was just for that time really come on but ultimately that does st that a, a lot of those cessationists in my opinion have been burned in, either by like false healings and teachers and whatever else or they've kind of had these underlying resentments and bitternesses and whatever that they actually project onto god in a way that they don't want him to be able to get the, get to heal people because they don't get healed or whatever. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. And so, or, or you go the other end and, and like, look, anybody can speak in tongues, anybody. It's just what's the spirit behind the tongue? Like, it, it, you're, like tongues is simply just your spirit speaking, speaking. So if you're, everything has meaning. Everything has meaning to some degree, can I, can right? I ask whoever is sniffing to just like maybe mute your camera because sorry, it's bothering me. Who's sniffing? I don't know. Is it me? Actually, uh, it's me. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, because it's like no... really loud and distracting. Sorry. I have a runny nose. I'm not. Uh huh. Sorry. <laughs> He's done. He's done. Uh, I got to say something because um, I gotta go. Lost you, Lester. That's all right. Colin, you can hear you, Lester. Here, here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I have to go back to sleep a little more because um, I'm kind of, I wasn't feeling. I wasn't sleeping very well last night. That's I tried right. to go to bed early, but still, it's not very good. Yeah. So, uh, I'm so sorry. Gotta don't go worry, dude. Early in the all morning. Right, have a good night. Yeah. God oh, bless and, uh, you. God bless you. May I ask Tristan? May I ask Tristan, is there a time we can talk one-on-one? Uh, at some point, mate, but I, I tell you what, my life is very full at the moment. I'm not going to lie. Like, when I say I'm busy, Recording like anybody who knows me knows I'm I'm not lying. When I say I, my day is from the time I open my eyes to the time I shut them, full of stuff. So I will try to find some time for you, but right now my life is... Not just busy, it's a total hectic, I'm trying to get things sorted because there's a lot going on. So you're going to have to bear with me, dude, all right? Okay, thank you. Thank you for yeah, thank you for that. No worries. There's a lot of other people here who can help you, though, as well, if you need it very quickly. These are all trusty. And I Sorry? want to thank you that, um, for allowing me back to this group and... I was really surprised, yeah. Really it's good to happy. see you, mate. God bless you, all right, dude? Okay. Thank so, you. <laughs> God bless. Bye. God bless sleep, God bless the... Peace, mate. God okay. bless you. Good try to make it, yeah, trying to make it the other, uh, next week. Thank you. Got it. Yeah. So, um... I was saying that uh, a, a king... Well, Jesus was saying that a, a kingdom divided cannot stand. Whereas when you look at the church at the moment, depending on what you call the church, but even within even within our own ministry, there's been like divisions and separations. And okay, those who weren't, those who left us were maybe never of us. Who knows? But I mean, Really, the, this this underlying spirit is always, and I'm talking about the evil spirit, the underlying evil spirit is always trying to separate people from manifesting the power that comes through unity in holiness. And this is why, like, you know, maybe a cessationist could turn around and say, well, we'd never see, like, true healings or deliverances, even though that's not true, but as far as they're concerned, right? Therefore, ergo, they don't actually happen because it was an, a, a time past of an apostolic age. Whereas my, what I would say is, well, look, maybe we're not seeing these things just because we're just not close enough to God. Not just on an individual basis, but actually in a corporate way where we are actually uh, allowing him, I guess, through our faith in him and knowing him and pleasing him through that to manifest oh. his holy works, right? Would you say the spirit that causes division is pride, the spirit of pride in your own righteousness? It's just pride generally. If it comes yeah. from a nefarious point, like division when it comes through nefariousness is always about pride. Whether it's I'm sorry, what my is kingdom. Nefarious, nefarious is evil, like very, very evil, like actively, knowingly evil. So like so basically if I know if I know that choosing this particular decision that there's like a premeditation as well to nefarious that that like that, that, that you know that you're being evil you know what I mean it's it's like true wickedness basically true wickedness is 
I know the way of holiness, but actually I'm going to choose this way and I'm going to actually go away, go, go against holiness, right? So a nefarious mm -hmm. evil spirit, for example, like pride, is basically saying, my kingdom come, not your kingdom, God, mm. right? Whereas this is the prayer that Jesus taught us, was that you, we need to pray thy kingdom come after howl hallowing his name and glorifying him as father, which is true. He's the father of all spirits, right? And, you know, then praying that his kingdom will come and that his will be done. Uh, but yes, when we actually say your kingdom come, we had better mean it because a lot of people actually are praying my kingdom come. Where's my mm -hmm. car? Where's my health? Where's my wife? Where's my, I don't know, where's my trophy? Where's my money? Where is my money? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you're praying for all these things. You're, not, you're just not praying for his kingdom. Like, look, all of us are going to take our last breath at some point in the next 50 years. Probably, right? But what you did with your time during that time is what's actually important. And I like... Francis Chan's uh, quote where he said what did he say he said our greatest fear shouldn't be of not succeeding but at succeeding of th in things that just aren't important mm. you know yeah, I mean it, it, I mean how, how devastating would it be to be like to have gained all of the world and everything in it and then get there on Judgment Day, and and God says, "I never knew you. I just never knew you. What were you going to offer me? Like bits of paper and some metal, or some digital figures? Or what? What have you got? You got nothing to show for it, right? You got a few like bricks and mortar on on a bit of land that I made, and you're offering me that, are you? It's all a joke. Your your yacht could be smashed by a tidal wave that I just, you know, could just." I, I always put it down as there ain't no back door into heaven. No, there isn't. There's only one gate, and you can only go that way. Everyone yeah. else who jumps the fence is a thief and a robber, right? And, it, and the gate's name is Jesus. Amen. The King's Gate. Mm -hmm. Go on, Miguel. Going back, going back, and maybe tying up with what you're saying, that we may ha may well be so deluded that we think we're doing things, and we're actually doing the things of for the Lord, and we. By the time we get yeah. to meet him, and we say, "I don't know you," and going back also, also to the fact, to the discernment, discernment that you were talking about, that the church uh, doesn't have discernment as as a collective. Uh, uh, there's a lack of discernment to see what the proper doctrine is, but then there is also the emphasis that a lot of, of us think about. I must have discernment to discern whatever is wrong with other people. a huge neglect of of an urgency to discern what is actually wrong with me us right please give me discernment please give me discernment not to spot others oh i've got discernment i can discern that you are being used by the de that by by certain a, a certain demon to do something to me and i discern that and i come against that in you uh, it's not you that is doing it. It's the devil in you that is doing it. We must never forget it's the devil in them, yeah? And that is a lot of emphasis in towards that. Mm -hmm. But I don't see a lot of emphasis. Please, Lord, this make me discern what is in me. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, obviously, you know, you can't point out someone's, like, stick in the eye when you've got a log in your own, <laughs> right? Yeah. But this is another reason why I think, like, uh, a young believer shouldn't suddenly just become some leader and be puffed up with pride and jump into the snare mm -hmm. of Satan because it's all very easy to to start discerning spirits and other people because when your eyes are open to holiness, you can do that. You can start to see. It's a bit like the Illuminati eye in the triangle thing. You just see it everywhere once you've seen it, right? It's a bit like that with discernment of spirits. Like once you see the kind of like the rock pink headed rock Jezebel chick, whatever thing going on. Like I literally like someone on Facebook was basically 
look like that with like piercings and whatever as a christian telling me that like deliverance ministry is a, uh, a joke and it's not even biblical and i was literally like really that's interesting <laughs> literally I, I you know you looking like that no offense i am gonna judge you by your looks sorry you know because if you've got pink hair and piercings and stuff i'm automatically going to judge you if you say you're a christian just gonna do it sorry because that's a righteous thing to do why is that a righteous thing to do because i know that spirit behind her i know what's going on and so you telling me when you look like that basically telling me as well as a man that i'm wrong in front of everybody like not coming to me in private not you know blah 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 you know just like coming out with it like it's some feminist you know you know in in the in the spirit of a suffragette type thing you know what i mean and it's like you just don't see the spirits behind you lady sorry it's just very ironic right now you know and that this is partly the issue it's like well the church is divided because people do not acquiesce to the fact that they have those particular spirits mm. like if you can prove to me i've got a jezebel i would i would listen to you you know what i mean i I'd just go for it because men mm. have them too right but you're gonna have to bring scripture you're gonna have to show me where i'm at i could do that with that lady if she asked i could pinpoint every single characteristic i've learned that is jezebelic about what she did whereas she would not probably be able to pin very much if anything at all with that particular spirit on me right and and that's where like the church is divided she's a christian she loves jesus christ right but ultimately it's not manifesting in her life because she doesn't understand how the spirits attack her and what she's in agreement with and therefore this predominant unholy spirit of division at least from the point of view that the church is not united is there whereas the the actual holy kind of side of the division is well i'm going to separate from you lady as much as you want to separate from me because i don't think you got the truth and i'm not going to listen to you because you're a, a usurping jezebel you know what i mean and you're just manifesting a demon why would i listen to you you know what i mean i've seen it time and time again you're trying to tell me that the predominant point of christianity which is to discern spirits and then work on them in yourself and help other people see it in themselves so they can work on it in themselves right and and allow the holy spirit to reform us basically to sanctify us once we know how to cleanse ourselves by capturing the thoughts and seeing how they attack us and then getting serious about prayer basically uh, you know unless you can prove that's not real christianity which I don't think you can do. I, I'm pretty sure I can give you a whole bunch of scriptures that tells you otherwise, right? We're going to divide on this in a holy way. Does that make sense? So it, there's there's like both spirits of division going on there, the unholy one and the holy one. Can Go for it, Paul. I, oh, sorry. I think Paul was first, then Lizette. Oh, okay. Well, uh, my, my, not just pride and a lack of discernment. I noticed, especially when I came away from other churches, that there was a fear to talk about evil spirits as well of sort of a lot of people. If you start to talk about it, you can see they were very uncomfortable. And there's a, that's an element of it as well. I think. But why are they uncomfortable? It, I think it's the spirits. Well, this is the point. It, yeah. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. <laughs> It's a spirit that's uncomfortable at being uncovered. That's, that's a, why it's a touchy subject with ever so many churches and everybody all over the world because the spirits in them are ultimately going to rise up against you, coming against them. Yeah. And they will not want to hear it. We'll put it like this. But fear is a spirit. Yeah. Right. Sorry, go ahead, Lizette. Yeah, I just wanted to add to what you said uh, about there's a there's a time that division is okay um like i see it uh right now yesterday i think uh elevation came to concert in miami and the stadium was so filled it was like packed 
and everybody coming out saying, oh, this was the best time. This was the best experience. And I know uh, most of those people, you know, and I'm like, I don't feel attracted to be there. It's like, you know, even even the Lord, like in the beginning, he divided the, the day and the night, the waters and, you know, mm -hmm. so it's, there's a time that it's okay to divide yourself. Like, you know, I feel that like where the whole crowd is going, where the whole church supposedly is going, mm -hmm. it's not the right way. You know, now when the Lord gives you the discernment, you're like, okay, all about prosperity, this group is, and sometimes you have to isolate yourself. I find myself like separating myself, even within the church sometimes, you know, it's like totally. they invite go someplace and I, I just don't feel right about it. Or there's certain, you know, like, groups that i'm like okay i'll join you because i feel you know the lord is actually in it like mm -hmm. for instance this group but there's other times that i i feel like to separate myself well, because you know, i don't feel it's of god you know but when there is unity you know like i've seen it with my church my church is very small you know and and we're all serving together and working for the lord and uh this weekend we're gonna go and and pray for um some people at the at a abortion clinic and we've been like praying for it and and you feel the unity and you feel like you're doing something for for god united it feels really good and it feels like you're working together like like the says you know like right. in one accord so the, but there are times what, what are you going to do you're going to burn the abortion clinic down <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we're we're praying because uh we're gonna have some um people interceding and some counselors that are going to speak to the young ladies so they don't abort. And they actually like committed to them that if they don't abort, they're going to be with them, uh, helping the mothers for two years, like helping with whatever they need and taking care of the baby, feeding and whatever. So it's, it's, it's a big project and we're going to go, uh, next Saturday. So it's, it feels really good when you're doing something like that in one accord for the Lord. But there's other times that it's like, oh, let's go after church to a winery <laughs> or whatever. I'm like, nah. Well, while you're talking to them, get someone to put petrol over the <laughs> building and burn it to the ground. <laughs> Such yeah. a David thing yeah. to say. But um, yeah, so I, I agree. Even like, like I think Moses was saying, like in his church, there's some things that you're like, okay, I agree with this. But there's other things that the, the spirit just lets you know that not, you know, it doesn't feel right. You know, and that's why the Bible says we need to work out our salvation, our own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, so that's it. Um, I was going to, something something yeah. sparked, what you said, something sparked. Um, I always use this example, but it, I think it is the best example of it, is Jesus was always whittling down rather than trying to gather. He was always trying to whittle down the people who were following him. Uh, you know, basically trying to skim off, for for want of a better word, the the, the dross, the the people who weren't committed or whatever, and just saying pretty like ultimately outrageous things. Sometimes, if, if you were a hearer of it, if I suddenly turned around to you and I said, "If you want eternal life, you're going to have to eat my body and drink my blood," and just left it at that, and you let's say you were all following me, right? And, and and I just suddenly came out with that. And, like, you can imagine what the disciples, like, the, 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 the many disciples that were around him, I think it was, like, 70-odd, right, were literally like, um, that's a hard teaching. That's actually awesome. It is awesome, but ultimately, no one no one actually said, what do you mean by that, Jesus? The ones they that were had the Holy Spirit would know. So the, the the ones that didn't have the Holy Spirit would be whittled away. Well, you say that, but like the other disciples that did say stay, they were like, well, he, he was like, are you guys, you're going to leave too, you guys. And he, they were like, well, we know you've got the words of eternal life, so probably not. <laughs> they, believed that yeah. they, were, they were convicted. They were convicted, but uh, or something that always interests me about that passage is no one actually said, Lord, what do you mean by that? There was, there was no kind of like dialogue. There was no... Obviously, Jesus said it in a very straight, matter-of-fact way mm. that cannot be, like, interpreted, if you know what I mean. Like, it's like, yeah, you've got to drink my blood. And, and 
you know, I've literally had someone, an old friend of mine, call me a vampire for that very reason. He said, "You mm. are a vampire. You drink the blood of Christ. You are a vampire." And I'm like, "Yes, yes, I am." No, I, I, I'm just literally like, "Yeah, it's kind of you. Just don't really get it. Sorry, but if if you like pre cross heard that from someone you were following." I think there would be many people who would have an issue, you know. A lot of people would go, mm, "I'm not they going would, to follow they would this have man." Have an anymore. issue if the, the the wrong spirit was ha- hacking into them. But what? I also, I also go on. Oh, sorry, can I? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I also heard that you know, according to the the law that drinking blood was um, that drinking blood was against the law, so was not against the state law, but against God's law, so that... Yeah, it still like, is. Some of, I heard that when some of them heard that, it was like they were confused about it because it's like the law forbade drinking blood. Mm-hmm. So instead of like having understanding, they thought he was violating the law. Yeah, probably. I mean, there were other things they accused Jesus of that were breaking the law, right? Like healing on a Sabbath... Uh, I don't know, there were other things as well. But what always interested me was a lot of these people had been following him and seeing him do amazing miracles. And for me, look, for me, I'm just this type of person. If you're going to heal the hand of a leper in front of my eyes, I'm going to give you a lot of respect. It's just the way I work. I see spiritual power. I go, wowzers, that's cool. Right? And then when that same person then tells me I have to drink his blood in order to find eternal life, I might struggle with it, but I'm, I'm going to, like, at least ask him questions, respect the fact, dig into it, go there, wonder what he's talking about, right? Rather than just, how dare you? I'm leaving. Goodbye. And then walk off, right? It, like the, the, the thing is, the, his works, um, I guess, they, they, is vilified the right word? They, they confirmed who, that he was who he said he was. Does that make sense? That's why everybody wanted to follow him. <clears throat> they wanted to see what he was going to do next, right? I don't under I I feel the same way you do because if he you know he spoke in parables he he healed people I mean you can see that he had a miraculous power and was a very I mean you know if you if you put yourself in the context of that you know that time that he was very wise that he was a wise teacher I don't I don't you know I would at least I mean it, it's, yeah it is a hard saying but I feel the same way I would I would ask him I would say what what do you mean because it just doesn't make sense that he does all these healings and well, even, even at, and see he's a wise. Yeah, go ahead. Even at that point, he was so wise that no one could ever contend with him. Whatever they mm-hmm. brought to him, he just literally flipped it on his head in a scriptural way with authority and just totally decimated whatever they were attempting to do in the most genuine, honest way as well. And there was nothing they could do about it. It had power. And so the, 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 the power of miraculousness wasn't just like manifestations of healing or something. He had wisdom that literally turned everything on it. No one could debate Jesus and win because every mm-hmm. trick in the book could be dealt with it's very easily by him. He knew exactly what people were going to do. Mm-hmm. And so when Jesus is the one causing division just because he wants to whittle people out, by discerning what people are actually going there to do because a lot of it's a wicked and an adulterous generation that desire desire signs and miracles and if you're just here for that i'm very sorry you're going to have to drink my blood if you want eternal life right so he was whittling them down of course by 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 seeing who responded to the light no matter what was said absolutely I mean, even the cross, no, even the... I, I don't... Oh, sorry. It's Moses' turn. I already spoke. Yeah. I was going to say that I think we can relate the whole 
um, situation of, um, you know, Je some of Jesus' disciples turning away from him at the moment they they stumbled upon or they, they, they stumbled upon something they couldn't understand. I think we can relate that with um, Chris's ministry and how a lot of people would come and agree with the whole casting out of demons issue. But then as soon as he's talking about the whole, um, you know, God, um, Godhead and all that and relationship between the father and son, he loses a lot of subscribers. You don't even try to reason with them and see where he's coming from. They just say, oh, so you don't believe Jesus is God? You're a heretic. And they leave, despite the fact that he has a lot of other evidence that the Lord is with him. So I'd, I thought we, I think we can relate um, the two together in a certain sense because it, it displays how that you, um, the man of God could have people following him, his ministry, and then certain followers, they stop because they stumble because of something they didn't understand and they didn't they didn't even think well he he um this person has a lot of evidence that he's truly of god so let me just give him a chance to explain himself but instead they just they just leave without being rational about it and trying to uh, meet the person where they're at i mean and I, most of it's not always that they don't sometimes like with an example like, sorry liz i just wanted to say sometimes an example like that it's not always that they don't understand is that they're sometimes they're looking for something. And so when he, you know, when he says, you know, Jesus is not God as in meaning, not the most high, sometimes people are already have doubt or they're already have an accusing, you know, attitude and they're just looking for something to give them, you know, you know, you know, so that I they have can a spirit say, oh, that I doesn't, away from I have a spirit that doesn't want to agree and, and agree with that truth. Yeah, yeah. Critical, well, critical. well you, yeah. you can always tell in this particular instance, yeah. you can always tell what the spirit is behind that because they'll, it's not that they'll just disagree. They'll actually put words in our mouths. I'm going to say our mouths, but especially Chris's mouth that like, like, uh, you know, they'll say, oh, you don't even think he's divine or you don't think blo you, 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 you. They literally go the whole hog in terms of like the lie, right? Uh, rather than discussing uh, and uh, you know the very clear, uh, what I consider very very clear scriptures, like it, uh, it, that if you are open to it, I think are very clear. And even if you still disagree, you cannot, as Sam Shamoon found out, call us a heretic for what what we actually believe. We're, we're, and um, you know. It, it is a it is a a, a very similar um, divisive spirit from their point of view. What Miguel was talking about right at the start of this, which is, I'm adamant, I'm right, and I will never change my mind. Um, I'm talking more about people that actually followed Chris at a point in time, and then they they split because of just because of that doctrine. Right, like, right. Steve, for instance, Stephen Bankars and other people who Chris has mentioned, he said. That did, like, there, was a, there was a time when he, made, he first started talking about this on his channel and he lost a whole bunch of subscribers because sure. yeah, we yeah. were initially following him. So but, I just thought we could relate that with Jesus' situation. But I'm pretty sure, like, I, I mean, I'm not going to speak on his behalf, but I'm pretty sure, like, if we're to take any role model from Jesus, that that's actually kind of a good thing. Because what you want is people who are actually... Look, whatever, whatever you're walking in agreement with... You want to walk in agreement with that person. How can two or more who disagree walk in the same path, right? So if you are going to disagree, you go over there and you join that church and you do that. And if you're going to call us heretics or you're going to damn us, well, okay, see you later, you know? Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody did that with Jesus Christ when he was walking on earth but before the cross with some of the things he said. For example, the Pharisees, they, you know, they were, they were all grumbling amongst each other. He raises Lazarus from the dead, and their thought isn't, wow, Lazarus just got raised from the dead. Praise God. Let's go and see what this man's still doing. He's literally not only healing lepers, he's now raising the dead again. No, their first thought was, we need to kill this man. He's going to take our whole nation. <laughs> right? And that, I'd, that's... I'd, I'd like to go back to pride in our own righteousness mm -hmm. because I think this page, this is a very salient point in this discussion. Go on. Because we can believe 
ourselves to have true doctrine and have pride in that. Mm-hmm. And I see, I see that a lot. I see that an awful lot in 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 every ministry. Right. Well, I mean, that's the thing. You can accuse all of us of that as well, right? We all we all we're all guilty of it at some point. At some level, yeah. I agree with that. There are doctrines where I've been adamant about it that I actually got proved wrong in the end. And I was I like, the, oh. division, the division point comes when you you're not being led by the Lord or the Spirit, you're being led by the pride in your own righteousness. Yeah. I think I that right. there is a I level of... Right. there is a, I what? think one of the things we are missing here, by the way, is there is a level of deception. Like, it's yeah. not that you're willfully, like, doing it. It's like yeah. you are literally just deceived, right? Yeah. And I, I, so to, But pride in your own righteousness, okay, maybe at some level it does go down to that if you go really deep. But yeah. I think most people would be like, well, the fact that you even change your mind about it means that that pride in your own righteousness in this particular regard can't be that strong. You know what I mean? Because there was an element of ignorance. I love the way Paul goes into it. He knows he's wretched. (coughs) You know, he knows there's no good thing living there. Mm -hmm. So, and and it's, I think it's about listening and being led by the Spirit and not letting that other evil spirit come and go, well, I'm right. Well, I'm right. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm right. And I refuse to budge. I've got it right. It really does depend. Like if 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 it it's, really it's does depend spirit, what you're talking it's, about. It's that therein lies a division whether you're going to listen to one spirit or the other, and it's a very deceptive spirit. Yeah, it's about how you receive it, but I would say yeah. it is what you what what you're talking about because if you're gonna if someone's going to come at me and go the cross was totally pointless, there's absolutely no point in it whatsoever, and there was just total failure there. I'm literally going to go, no, I'm right. I'm yeah. right, I'm right. Yeah. You know, like there Amen. is literally nothing you're going to do to be- dissuade me from what I know is true, right? So it really Amen. does depend on what you're kind of disagreeing over. But still, I know what you're trying to say. In this re- particular regard, you're talking about Christians, talking about probably secondary doctrines, right? Yeah. Like yesterday, last night, David. What What happened? Uh, we were talking, I was, I, I disagreed that um, God, when he made everything, mm-hmm. that he didn't like breathe his life into it. And that's how it came into this. I thought God was just like, like that with the animals. And then they all just had life in them like that. Mm-hmm. And like, it was, it was mainly because I was trying to make the case that I don't think animals go to heaven because they, I didn't, I didn't think that they had life breathed into them the same way Adam did. Mm-hmm. But then like everyone else prove me wrong and i was like okay i'm wrong mm-hmm. well always remember that you know the wind of god or the breath of god the ruach right there there is an element of like breathing is something common to every like organism basically at some level right yeah. especially mammals right we have lungs literal literal lungs right fish have them birds have them mammals have them right yeah. um so that and there's something very sacred about the breath i think that's why smoking is so anti-christ because at at some level i had it revealed because i was a smoker for years that when you intake this uh i guess this inhalation of smoke what you're actually doing is corrupting that sacred breath really it is sacred to every breath that you take has some sort of holy uh, grace behind it that as you intake, you are intaking a, a, a very special um, Every gift. Every breath is given it's a by gift. God. It's a gift from Right. God. And when he kills us, because all of us have to die because of our sins, right? Uh, even if we get new bodies, when he kills us, he takes our breath. And I, I always, I, I like that kind of, um, I love the, I, 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 with that song I wrote, what was it called? I can't remember now, but um, into your hands, I place my spirit with his final breath. He said that, right? 
Like I, I love that that was Jesus's wow. final prayer. You know, like it is finished. Into your hands I place my spirit. What a what a, a an amazing way to use that last sacred breath, right? Yeah. And then he gave up the ghost. It said, right? Like he literally released that his spirit to. Yeah to the lord like literally gave it to his father you know and then he had the authority to take it up again but the, my what my point is is that that breath is sacred and always has been and always will be and every breath is numbered by the way you might not be conscious of it but every time you breathe has you know you're one nearer to your last you're one nearer to your last but you're a lot further on from your first yeah as well right and so that however you look at it in this life it's finite but it's also a huge gift and isn't it interesting how satan persuades people to corrupt it in so many different ways that breath right so yeah i mean there are like eastern practices that people could talk about right now uh, you know i'm not obviously i was into the new age i did study those kind of things but look there was something uh there's an element of truth in all false religions you know that's what makes them compelling because if it was just total lies no one would follow them right but there the the one thing i did like about those false religions from the east was about this uh emphasis on the sacredity really of not just the breath but life generally it, it did give this kind of positive um uh, outlook for me on life where i saw like a I, I did see the kind of trees moving in a whole different way. And, you know, compared to how we grow up thinking that everything's just normal. Oh, look, it's just the moon. Don't worry. It's just the moon. It's just the sun. We can explain that. It's just a burning thing, you know, that, that gives, you know, earth heat. And, and that's all it is. You don't need to worry about it. Don't need to think any more about that. It's absolutely massive, but you can't understand it. Uh, but we just know what it is so there you go like there's just no there's no awe there's no um majesty or, or poet poetical appreciation of it and it's the same thing with the breath you know what i'm trying to say so it's just regarded as something that's normal and there's no real appreciation of it yeah I mean, well, it, it's, it's not even regard, it's, for most people, it's normal and nobody appreciates it because they expect to get the next one. Yeah, yeah. Right? But, but more than that, people enjoy corrupting it, whether it's with a bong or, a, I don't know, a cigarette or, I don't know, a pipe or, I don't know, like sniffing glue or so. I don't know. People do it all the time, right? They, they literally inhale something to corrupt what is actually very sacred as a very sacred gift that you can't actually guarantee is going to happen in your next moment you can't guarantee i can't guarantee that when i'm exhaling right now that i'm going to take another breath yeah praise well, the lord take it back to the <laughs> uh the division thing and jesus dividing and I think that's part of the purification process. The division. The it, division it, it, is it, external it, division or internal. I think it's Jesus purifying, purifying the, it's like gold. And it's, it's alluded to in the Bible a lot, isn't it? The purification of gold. Well, yeah. You want to separate so, the, the chaff so that, from the that, wheat, right? that, that, that division is actually a purification process. Is weeding out the impurities. The yeah. Middle. Well, the chaff is no good to anybody. Yeah. Right? The it wheat is, is what you eat. Oh. Sorry, go on, Savannah. Sorry. No, you. No, I, I was just saying separate, separating the sheep and the goats. As well. Yeah. yeah. Although goat does taste nice, so that's a bad example. Yeah, it really does taste nice. <laughs> yeah, I like, like goat, goat. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. totally. Yeah, I mean no one wants chaff, right? Chaff I mean, okay, it's good it's a good fire starter. Um, but you know, that's not gonna help you in hell, that's gonna make it worse, right? You know, you wanna be wheat. And Jesus' goal really is to Find out who's going to remain in allegiance to him the whole way. It's purifying. Yeah, he's pur and, and if you're not up for the purifying element of being a disciple, you're not going to make it. 
And and it's it's it's, it's, a, it's an in, increasing heat, isn't it? It's a, it's a it's a gradual increase, gradually increasing heat. And <laughs> and it is it's, and it's uh, 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 and you may want to get away from it. And I I'm so thankful that the Lord has given us. You know, he's just so patient that. Crazy. When it turns up the heat many times, we just, whoa, we just we shy away from it. Whoa, oh, that's too hot. Just give it up. <laughs> yeah, and then just give it up. Again. Don't hang on to it. Just give it up. Yeah. I mean, just for, then, just generally as, a, as like an edif edifying thing that you just said, to cooperate, to, to go with that, um, I find it hugely restful to know that God is in total control. Amen. And whatever you're going through, okay, you react with frustration. Okay, you might react with fear or worry or doubt or whatever. And those, some of those are sinful, let's face it. But ultimately, if you can react with just like, c'est la vie, <laughs> uh, let's just go with it and see what happens. More often than not, it's going to work out for your... I mean, everything works out for the good of those who love God. Does it have to in involve the chastising? No, it doesn't, depending on the way you react. So you can have a situation that is like inflammatory and potentially you can react in totally the wrong way and then end up being completely chastised by the Lord, getting the same result further down the line a long way further down the line mm. then if you had just reacted in the right way knowing he's in total control having the rest in that no matter how bad it is and, and then just, just going oh well say la vie and, that, and, then, and then reacting yeah. like that right and isn't that just how satan attacks us to make us try and seize control and keep control well he, he by whatever traumas and by whatever incidents and by whatever rubbish he puts in your life that you experience he always tries to make you keep control through fear of what might happen that's true that is true yeah uh, ultimately his goal is to move the flesh yeah so like often like for me like rage is a thing right i will literally just lose my rag you know what i mean but i feel it come up i feel and i literally can't stop it it's like i go blind with red you know what i mean and in that moment, I am totally in the flesh. You know what I mean? I, I, I might have been walking with the Spirit for 16 years. And then in that moment, just literally let it rip, right? And that is, a, that is something I have to repent for fairly often, way more often than it should be, honestly. Go on, uh, Adam. Go on. Oh, sorry, Adam. Go for it. Okay, I was wondering a question what I believe the Lord has showed me the other night. Is it possible that the Lord basically puts us, puts us through time to show us who we really are? Like if like God puts us or allows us to go through an anger time and then we fall and we basically start acting out in anger or violence or wishing bad things upon people or reality. And if I was never in an anger situation, then I would never be thinking of all that stuff and I'd be kind of close to God or whatever. But if I'm in an anger environment, people are harshing against me and and i would have thoughts of punching him or wishing bad curses upon him is that god showing me my true wickedness that that i'm blind to and that i did that i need to work on um for me the discernment of spirits has come for me at least when i've seen things manifesting then noticed afterwards that that's not a good thing like that was an evil spirit oh that's an evil spirit i need to note that because that just manifested through me and then what happens is the more it happens the more i feel the lord makes it manifest so i can see it because until you can actually see it and knows and you know how it attacks you you don't even know how to deal with it he gives you the discernment yeah so the discernment comes through the man like if those spirits could help it they would remain hidden. They would remain under the radar. They want to stay in the house. They don't want to vacate their temple, right? And look, if your temple's corrupted, which all of our temples are corrupted, by the way, like the actual flesh, 
sight. Like the spirit man, the inner man is born again. The flesh will yeah. never be born again. We have yeah. to get new bodies, right? So this temple is always corrupt. Does that make sense? It's corrupted in so, at some level. It's always corrupted. So when the Lord is working with you on a certain season in your life to do with a certain spirit, you will notice it manifesting more and more, like you're saying, Adam, right? But the way yeah. you need to respond to that is, right, I'm starting to recognize a pattern here. Now I need to actually like focus on how i'm going to come against it pick up my cross resist it submit to god resist the devil and then he'll flee ask and you'll receive ask for the discernment over it right i do ask for discernment but if nobody was ever provoked me to anger then that spirit wouldn't be manifested in me well demons so, work demons work in others again and and, and with the demon in you right they work right. in tandem I that i see that all the time with with the ones that mean that and other people it's the what same for me what it's the same for me but actually be yeah. thankful for that because without yeah. those other people manifesting their demons you wouldn't be able to see yours and then resist them here's the thing slow down there's reaction there's react and there's respond don't react straight away. If, if, if you feel, you'll feel the spirit rise up in you to want to make you buy it and act and react. Mm -hmm. Respond. That's <clears throat> what I... Go on, Adam. That's what I have. Yeah, you... Like that. Rises up. Rises up. Makes you buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Instead so of being calm and taking captive what's happening and what people so are being, saying to you. Okay, so basically God's allowed me to go through those times so he can let me see the spirits that are in my flesh so I can deal with them in the name of Jesus Christ. Right, right. So like, I, I think this is helpful. I don't think Chris will mind me telling anyone this, but um, when I first went to BDS and I met Chris personally, and I sat with him at, at the computer and he showed me like an entire list of spirits that he knew he still had. And it was long, by the way. I was like, literally right, wowzers. Okay. And as I was reading through them, I, obviously, I, I, I'll be honest with you, if I read it now, I would identify with so many of them, but he was way further ahead of me in that sense at that time, right? And still is, for sure. But look, like, he was like... This is what I've seen manifesting in me. This is what I still need to deal with that the Lord's pointed out in me that I still need to work through. And when, whenever he sees them kind of uh, manifesting, he'll go into prayer. He'll let you know. That's when he submits to God and resists the devil in the hope that he'll get free. But look, obviously everybody knows from Chris's testimony that he came out of a very, very like wicked life. He's full of evil spirits, right? So did I. That's the thing. I, I also came out of a very wicked, like obviously wicked life and did a lot of stupid things. And But the, the, the difference between Chris at that time and me at that time was he was way more on it with the spirits that he had simply because God had already shown him how these things manifest because he was resisting them way harder. And it was, uh, thankfully, I, I praise God that I went there and discovered this because like when I went home and meditated on this and years later, I guess I have my own list now. At the time, I didn't have a list, but now I've been able to pinpoint what I've got to deal with. You know what I mean? The sneaky ones are the sleepers. Sleepers? The ones that don't manifest only once and then go down for fear of detection. Well, they all fear detection, and th that's the encouraging thing, Adam, I was going to say to you, is if they are starting to manifest, especially regularly in a certain period of time, you know that spirit's on the ropes. You know it's on the ropes. When they, when they are manifesting, when they're laughing, when they're doing whatever it is they're doing in an obvious way, the Lord is provoking them to surface. They don't want to surface. Only if it's going to cause you to sin... But like, ultimately, yeah, okay. When you when you are manifesting those spirits, you are sinning in some kind of way. But when they're being provoked by other spirits 
uh, as well to cause you to sin. It can also be the Lord forcing them out so that you see what you've got to deal with. Because unless he shows you or me or anyone else what he doesn't like about us, we can't change. We can't repent. Like people often say, well, repentance just means a change of mind. Yeah, it does. You've got to change your mind from being that evil person that agrees with that evil spirit and come in line with holiness. How do you do that unless it actually manifests in you so you can see that you've even got it? Mm. So that you can even witness this thing and recognize, oh, I have this thing I need to deal with. Uh, I'm starting to feel it manifest. My belly's starting to, and my whole body's feeling tangly right now. Praise the Lord. I feel, I feel it manifesting. Okay. Praise the glory to God. Ask him for help. I would love if, I would love if anybody would tell me the sins I'm blind to and, and correct me, even if it's openly. I would, I would love to be rebuked harshly. Because that's how serious God is. Narrow is the way unto life. And you be there that find that Jesus said out of his mouth. Honestly, like Adam, no one likes being rebuked harshly. It literally says that in, in Hebrews 12. Like, don't faint when he scourges you and chastises you. Look, it's never a nice thing. Who like Who likes being in really big trouble with like whoever's an authority over them, mum or dad, whatever, when you're a little kid? And they get the wooden spoon out because you've been naughty. No one likes that. But what it actually does, it produces righteousness in you because you start, you fear the Lord. When he chastises you, you fear him, right? You fear him enough. Uh, but the, the irony of like punishment in that sense, right? The scourging, whatever, is that the punishment, the chastising produces a, a great love for the Lord because you know... He's doing it because he loves you. You're not a bastard. You're a son when you're being chastised, right? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So the f yeah. I, I just wanted to pick up on that because it like when you say I love being chastised, I know I know what you mean, but like if anyone else was hearing this, or like Dave's gonna put it on a you know, out there for people to hear, like Look, we we know that chastising is awful. Who likes chastising? Really, come on. And if you can avoid being chastised because you're a good boy, you like being perfected by the Lord. Right, right, so, right. Exactly. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Right, good. Yeah, I just feel tingling. Well, we all. The deliverance comes in so many different ways. Even just hearing truth, like real truth, can cause demons to come out. Because they hate it. They are anti-truth, right? Jesus is yeah. the way, the truth. There, the is, life, there right? is a separation in an individual when they hear the truth. And they can reject what that demon has been saying to them in their mind. And then that's when it doesn't have any legal rights and it has to come out yes but that comes from taking the thought captive yeah so when you've actually discovered how they attack you and how they use your mind and then you catch them every everything starts as an inception in here the battlefield is in the mind that's right because you cannot manifest anything into the out there until it's actually gone through there does that make sense so the, obviously we call it the conscience is the Lord speaking to you in, through his Holy Spirit. But there will also be temptations from the flesh, literally from the flesh. I know I always point to my arm. I might as well point to my foot or something. It's, in the, it's, it's literally in the whole body, right? Wherever it might be. I mean, obviously sexual demons might be in a more private area, for example. But, you know, they, they do localize in certain places. I'm not saying they don't. But look, ultimately... From the, you are tempt you are tempted by the lusts of the flesh. So whatever you've in your your sin life before you found Christ, whatever you were giving into, they will always try that weakness. They'll never give up on that. You know, like even from outside. Let's say you got deliverance, they'll always continue on that weakness because you always gave in in the first place. That's what you agreed with, right? Mm -hmm. And and it is a it is a constant resistance against it once they're out. Like 
you know, they, they go into dry places and then go back to see whether they can still get in. It literally, Jesus says that as well. Literally, literally says it. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know how, how we can relate this to division now because we, <laughs> we're so far away from that original conversation. But, but yeah, it looks like a bunch of people are getting deliverance. So go ahead, it friend. It does. It does look like manifestations are coming. I was, I was kind of... Can I... Sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, just let Bren go. Just let get Bren no, go we first. About, we were just talking about manifestations, and I just I heard a a name in my in my head, and I don't. I, yeah. What was it? Astra. Yeah, that's a demon. May Did he be damned in Jesus' name. What was it? Astaroth. Huh? Astra. Astra. We dealt with that one before, didn't we, Dave? What, who was that in now? I can't remember. It was ages ago. <coughs> what was the name again? Astroth. Astra. You could probably Google that name. It's like a common yeah. demon name, you know? I know, we've, <coughs> when I know we've dealt with Hazazel. Hazazel was it's one. So there was an Astroth like a... as well. I remember Astroth. Anyway, sorry, Bren. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I, I was hoping we could talk briefly about some wisdom about how to treat or interact, talk with brothers and sisters in whom we've separated from, divided from. How do we, if, what relationship there is from, let's say, churches that we've separated from in the past or brethren that we know or holding different doctrines that are true, how do we talk to them? Uh, how do we? Well, that's a great uh, question. And I'll tell you what, you might not like the answer. You don't. <laughs> exactly. Because the, th the problem is, it depends what you're dividing over. Because if you're dividing over something major, like, let's say, women can lead a church and usurp men, for example. A lot's wife. Yeah, or, I don't know, let, let's say it's a, something more progressive, like, yes, we believe abortion is is always okay and women should always have that choice for example or um i don't know something else major that, that you know all the hot potatoes like homosexuality for example like there are a lot of churches that will affirm homosexuality as not a sin and as part of a, a, a god's plan for uh, people to love each other men and men and women and women and so these let's say hot potatoes these common uh political hang-ups that people often divide over in the church right um if you're dividing over something like that and you know that that person is engaging in those things as well and they're still calling themselves a christian no you don't even eat with such a person it says 1 corinthians in uh 5 verse 12 to 13 you don't judge the unbeliever. So, like, if an unbeliever is doing that, they're absolutely um, you're free to do whatever they want. They need to make the most of it, uh, you know, because let's hope they, they actually think it's worth it in the end. We know it isn't, but let's hope for them it's worth it, right? If they're willing to give up what Jesus is offering, all humanity, just so that they can get their kick in whatever way it is, just let them go ahead and do it, and don't judge them for it. But if someone says that I follow Jesus, I'm a disciple, and they still agree with things that we know from Scripture he doesn't like, that he literally says, you will not inherit the kingdom of God if you're doing this, then we have an issue. And this is something that actually, because churches don't implement this particular harsh uh reaction uh that the whole thing gets corrupted and this is another reason why there's no power in the churches because that unwillingness to divide from people who with their lips at least say they follow jesus but still would promote and propagate something that the bible clearly calls evil is very uh it's it's just going it's a little leaven will corrupt the whole lump do you see what i mean it spreads throughout the whole thing 
And all of a sudden, you've got Christians doing yoga, bringing in kundalini spirits everywhere. You, you know what I'm saying is, all of a sudden, everything's like free game. Anybody can do whatever they yeah. want. You know, a Christian can be a Satanist. It doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. You can Kanye West can pray with Marilyn Manson, and no one's going to bat an eyelid. You know what I mean? Because love is love. Yeah. And, Today, um, so just I didn't know you were still. No, no, I mean, I could prattle on till the cows come home. Go ahead. Yeah, today, because you know that church, they normally have online Zoom meetings, so they tried to ask me to join. Uh And then I I literally just said, I will not be joining. And then they said, that's cool. Hope we see you again. And I was like, you probably won't see me, but I pray the best for all of you, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I just, it was hard for me to, like, come out and just say that the way it was. Yeah. I was tempted to sort of beat around the bush, but I just was like, let me not kid myself. I'm not coming back, you know? Yeah, uh, you know, sometimes it takes... Sometimes, uh, as with everything, you have to discern um, each case separately as an individual case. Sometimes it might be right just to give a little bit more grace to people who are just just very immature in the faith or whatever. They might have their whole church thing going, but they just don't get it. In which case, you just go, okay, it might be worth persevering just a little bit more until they very strongly reject it, like Reynolds did, for example, David, Mm. uh, where this was like a major issue that really did divide us up. I mean, there's no doubt about that, right? I mean, we were were unified in in so many ways, and then this potential, this particular doctrine that essentially that pastor lied about he saying pretty, that he was on board with. He lied. He, he just lied. lied about it. And, and uh, in order to put our bums on his seat, basically, in his church, right? That's why he did it. He didn't want to... He wanted to compromise by acquiescing to something he didn't really believe in order to coax us in to where he was at. Does that make sense? That, that, that became very evident when I played Heidi's vid- uh, video, didn't it? Do you remember? And yeah. the next week, the, the, his wife came in a, a pure red dress. Do you remember that? Well, yeah. I mean, she literally that came was as just the, the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Well, no, it world. was. It wasn't just that. Like she made a, she made every effort. Like what, what you were explaining about head covering and things like that, right? Yeah. And giving good scripture and whatever else for that in a prayer or prophesying scenario, but. The way the pastor's wife responded to this was to dress up, make up the whole shebang uh, in a flowing heels, red dress, flowing red dress, looking seductive, basically, right? Yeah. In in a certain way, right? Uh, maybe maybe not intentionally, but looking like a woman of the world, right? Mm-hmm. In complete re- reaction to what David was saying, which was about taking the humble take the earrings out of your ears type attitude or something like that. Right. I, I can't remember exactly what you're saying, but you were quoting that particular verse where we all know what, what I'm referring to. Right. And so, um, th- she literally took the initiative to go to, to, um, go the extremity of the opposite of whatever David was talking about. Like she, she, she literally made that basically. effort. Yeah. No, she, she was just, it was That's just a trollish bad. thing to do. That's what I would do like, before, like, intentionally to try and irritate someone. Right, someone right. To... What are we talking about? I'm sorry, I lost track of what we're talking about. Um, there was a scenario a few years, a couple of years ago now or something where, um, yeah, basically we were having uh, contentions <laughs> with a certain church uh, that had oh. basically... And this church saw the deliverance take place. It literally saw deliverance and, take and place. still denied that Christians could ever have demons. And th- yeah. this was this was the uh, as always something that everybody loves to divide over. Like there's absolutely no way a Christian can, ha- can have a demon, apparently, right? In which case, I am not a Christian, you know, because yeah. I, I, you know, a- according to them, because you know, ultimately, if there's anything I know about myself, I can't even lift my eyes to heaven most days and even, like, dare to talk to the Father for, you know, 
for for the shame of of me surely should be knowing better by now and still getting it so wrong you know what i mean and it's not always it's it is ignorantly done honestly that it's unwillful but it's still i should know better right i had the same in two churches down here two of them yeah the other one was the church of new england life, wasn't it? new life pentecostal church oh it's the pentecostal one yeah but this is the thing, this is what I was going back to saying, like, you know, when, when Chris and I were talking about it the other day, it's like, well, where do we go? Like, we would just like to sit in the pew and listen to someone else, really. But when no one else really knows the truth, who else is going to talk about it? Because if you're not talking about the truth, and I know you're not talking about the truth, well, then I need to tell the truth. I, I, I really don't want to be in this position other than I just love talking about the Lord. I'm not not looking for a pastor or a you know a, a leadership role in any way other than just no one else seems to want to go that deep right it's a, it, it's uh, the reason being because what's in them is uncomfortable with going that deep yeah and I, I, it exposes it exposes well honestly if i'm if i'm going to talk honestly sometimes i feel uncomfortable going that deep yeah, but i just have to push too. myself to go that deep basically because what's in you doesn't want you to go there yeah and thankfully because i know it's that it's going to be exposed thankfully i know I, that i wanted to say something about since we were talking about deliverance and i i remember one time and and um division i remember one time i was on tiktok where there was a girl claimed to be a christian and she had did where she was introducing her her altars mm. and it's just you know i just you know just i i think there's you know i think there's also just a lot of deception sometimes with there's certain things that i you know like i that i'm interested in like science and psychology and stuff but some people really go really far with it and i think that it because it's a deception where that people just they just say oh it's just a mental illness and stuff so now yeah i think you have a lot of christians that are just i'm sorry if i went off topic but that are staying in bondage because a doctor is telling them oh you have this chemical and balance and you're going to have this for your life and that was something that i was thinking about as we were talking about churches denying you know christians having demons and stuff like that it's a big deception i think with the with the psychology and 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 uh you know just sort of covering up uh the reality of the demonic oppression like i do believe that those people if they, you know, endure to the end, that they'll be saved. But I think there's a lot of people unnecessarily in bondage because they believe this lie that, oh, I have a, you know, it's just a, it's just a, a disorder. Point, rather, yeah, rather than demons, yeah. The trouble I have with that doctrine personally is that it, it's more like occult knowledge, hidden knowledge, rather than something. It's never talked about in the Bible, is it? Altars. You know, mm -hmm. it's just not there. You can't find it anywhere. And mm -hmm. where, well, you, you can you can make a good case that a Christian can have a demon, in my opinion, at least from the Bible. You cannot make mm -hmm. a good case that anybody has altars, right? This is very much like a an extra biblical. Mm -hmm. You know, I I need I to agree. be initiated into this knowledge in order to see these things or or accept this doctrine right it's the three-year-old dave or the three-year-old paul or the four-year-old savannah coming up it's not her right but that but that also that also separates you from your agreement with an evil spirit yeah it might it have does. like look spirits come in through trauma as well i get it but ultimately it, it does or if the if your soul is fragmenting into different personalities or whatever you know, you, you're you're uh, nullifying your agreement with an evil spirit and saying this. Just, I I just need to be pieced together because I'm broken into one person again or something. It's just literally like it is. It, it, it 
I've gone the whole way with this, as David has as well, to some extent. We did this whole thing years ago. I can't remember even when it was. It was 2016 it was, it was or something. It was to do with the traumatic events. And it's yeah. not actually the traumatic event that, there's, that is the problem. It's what you agree with in your mind in relation to what you've just seen. In other words, uh, if, 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 if you're you know, assaulted by a man violently and you're a woman... It's not the actual violent assault that is the issue. It's what you're agreeing with in your mind that, that the enemy's attacking you with that will be the problems, the underlying issues and the agreements where the demons come in. And they'll always remind you of it by reliving the memories to stay in you. Yeah, but I mean... The, yeah, the, the, because... I'm Sorry, the pro oh, sorry. the pro the problem is with that though is look when you when you go into this whole altar thing, things get so crazily confusing. Yeah, it's crazy that, that that literally you just have look you you just lost all the simplicity of the power of the authority of Christ yeah. because all of a sudden no you can't cast this thing out because it's a split personality thing yeah, and you have to really now you have to now sit there for hours ministering this healing ministry type uh you know sympathetic oh this person had this trauma but i'm not saying you don't do that um but what i am <clears throat> saying is when it all gets really confusing and you don't know who you're talking to anymore it, it's just stupid jesus never did that why do we need to do that you know what i mean it's just stupid i, I, was, I wasn't saying that i was saying i don't believe in altars i believe that if you've got someone some some if you believe that an altar is a three-year-old you coming up, that's a demon pretending to be you to keep you in bondage to it, to excuse away its presence. It's a, you know, what I would say is these altars are, there are certain spirits that act as God, like, I, I'm just using a term because it's the only way I can communicate, but they act as a, as if a guardian, like a guardian demon or something. Sometimes kids if they're extremely isolated, will make an, you know, have an imaginary friend or, you know, befriend a demon. And I think these altars are like a guardian, you know, sort of demon that is trying to, you know, and I, what I believe is, yeah, it's you. You, yeah, the demon is actually telling you that it's an altar so that it can stay because it, you know what I mean? And it's saying, you know, and so it's like, I, it's just, I think it's just, and the thing is, I think that person, like, I'll give an example, like anger. At, like, say a child has been through something traumatic. And it, at the time that they show anger, they, they, found, they found safety. So now they come in agreement with this demon, they say, and then it is somewhere gets along with, like, either psychology, some psychology mixes, and they say, oh, that's that's an altar. It's a personality that I that I take on to protect yeah. myself. That's that's Susie, and Susie protects me. And, but it's really a demon of anger that the person came in agreement it's, with. It's the eye demon. It's the eye demon disguised. It's the eye because demon disguised. I'm going to do this. I feel this about myself. I've I, I'm I, I've had enough of this. Yeah, because like, it's that convincing talking, demon. It's it's a, it's it's like a, a deceiving demon that makes you believe it's you. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Because like you know, it's like maybe they felt so out of control, their life felt so out of control that they were able to show anger and they were able to fight off and people backed off and then now this demon you know convinces them. Oh, see, you know, I'll protect you. I'm Susie, and then oh, I'm Susie. You know, and it's like you know, it's like the puppet. Uh, guys, how how do people use the the, the the idea of the fragmented soul to prove this false doctrine of altered personalities? How do they use that? Because I heard that I first heard of this fragmented soul from Win Worlian. I don't think he believed that he was a real deliverance minister for soul. How do they use it? I know something about this, um, especially from my background. Um, basically, if you go through something that's really traumatic, you dissociate because you can't handle what's happening. You literally go somewhere else and think a demon enters in, and that's what's behind. You, you, you agree with what the demon's feeding. Yeah. Yeah. You the agree with what the demon's feeding. Yeah. yeah. I used to dissociate. It's not, it's not, it's not, 
an altar or a, it's a demon, like David says. But, yeah. But how do they use the teaching of the fragmented soul to prove their theory oh, about... Oh, what is their religion? teaching? <sighs> yeah, how do they use the idea of the fragmented soul to prove altered personalities is true? They mix psychology but with they say uh, their Christianity. Psyche, they're saying well, I, that your psyche, they're, 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 the teaching is that your psyche... In the yeah. in the traumatic event has split, and that you develop that you it's the split of your psyche, like a split of your mind. Right. So like you yeah. you you create it's like you and and because sometimes like imagination can be a trauma response. So like maladaptive daydreaming, like people like so there's it's like they say your psyche splits, and like you create this personality to sort of buff buff. Um, buff against the trauma or like you know what i mean and okay. so they're saying it's like an extension of your psyche all right that's all right that's that's a different kind of fragmented soul than when worthy's teaching of it yeah all right thank you for answering you're welcome um guys i'm, I'm really kind of i'm gonna head on in a minute hold on Brian. what was you gonna say i just wanted to quickly bring it back to division how you would well, the response was not to associate with them. I have the scripture in front of me about what things that we're not, no, we're not supposed to eat, associate with them, no, not to eat. And so I brought that up. And I'm, I guess what I'm trying to get at is what doctrines or what things do we show? Do we, I guess we need to be led by the spirit. That's the ultimate answer uh, and follow, obey the word. But as far as what the word out, lays out and what it doesn't, what doctrines are we supposed to disassociate with? You know, like ignore them at the grocery store. Don't talk to them, uh, even though they see us. What or when do we engage in the cordial kind of conduct? Does it actually say doctrine there? I'm sorry. Does it say doctrine? Or it does uh, it? Right now, I have First Corinthians five eleven, and it reads, "But now I have written." Starts at five eleven. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, verse nine. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters. For then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner was such an one no not to eat and then for what have i to do with what have i to do to judge them also that are without do not ye judge them that are within but them that are without god judges judges Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Right, so it's not to do with doctrines, it's to do with manifest sins that God is calling out in people who say they believe and follow him. And it, like the only reason you, igno- you literally ignore them is because you've done everything you can to change their mind, and you can see that they're not going to change their mind, and therefore, goodbye. You see what I'm saying? There's also the scripture that says a heretic after the second and third um, admonition rejects. Yeah, I mean, well, everything needs discernment. You know, like you have to assess whether someone's even born again. Ask and you shall receive. Right, right. But look, if you've made a good case to someone who you know like wants to follow the lord and they just really don't want to do that they want to continue their idolatry or covetousness or railings or whatever else yeah and you've made a good case about it and they've decided that they are going to continue in that regardless of what you've said there's nothing more to say (coughs) but that doesn't mean when you see them that you're unpleasant you don't need to be unpleasant to say You can be curt and still polite. Does that make sense? So, Mm -hmm. look, we we don't hate people. We don't. We're not try not to be rude to people unless, you know, uh, well, really, we should just try not to be rude to people. Just generally, right? 
but sometimes there is a case for let, let's take someone like Wally Carson or Pete Cabrera some, someone who literally has had their sins like like thrown against the wall for everybody to see and they still do not repent let alone take down their uh you know their high minded self office they've given themselves as a pastor of pastors both those guys have said that they are pastors of pastors you know yet they are so clearly con men and so for certain um people who are who say they're believers and who are working iniquity who are on a public platform like youtube or something to my mind at least it's righteous not just to expose their garbage but also to in a way mock them because they are like we are literally going like out of our way to expose just how wicked the the spirits are behind them basically and showing them, trying at least to show them where their agreements are, and they are just so full of pride they can they still cannot see it. And to my mind, Pete went so far that he literally blasphemed the spirit, you know, uh, by calling what we do evil as deliverance and and whatever else. Like he he stuck he he stood on that he fell on that sword so hard that he was willing to literally call it evil, basically. Uh, so that's really sad. But look, that, there's a difference between people like that and someone who's like dabbling with, I don't know, porn or something, coming from a life of uh, of old, you know, habits or whatever, who is saying that they want to give it up or whatever and still can't quite kick it. And it's like, well, look, mate, ultimately I've given you the ultimatum here. I've told you my point and look, I know you say you want to serve and, and follow the Lord, yet you just don't want to kick this habit. Well, look, until you do, we just can't talk. Sorry. You know, I like you. I want to hang out with you, but we can't hang out. I can't even eat with you, really, until you're going to kick this. Because this is an issue. You know what I mean? And it, it's almost like tough love, you know? It, there's a difference between someone like that and someone like, like the guys I just talked about who are literally without any kind of shame or repentance or, or grief over their exposed wickedness, just continue to go deeper into their delusion of like grandeur and whatever else. Right. Lord, I don't think you mentioned that it's a relevant example. I'm sorry. I said, glory to God. That's a relevant example for me and people that I'm dealing with. So great, I'm great. Thinking. Praise the Lord. I suppose if if, 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 there, if there is doubt and you have doubt, you must ask. You must always go to the Lord in prayer about things, you know? Because ultimately, the direction and the true direction comes from there. What, what are you relating the doubt to? Sorry. If, if you do not know the direction and do not oh, know... Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, I've got you. You know, I, I think asking you receive. Well, that's e e that's what I've I've learned not to jump ahead and and trust in my own way of thinking, but to seek the Lord in everything that. And I still don't do it all the time, but He's teaching me to more and more and more and more go to Him. You got to judge everything. You got to judge people by their fruit. You know, like it. it the, if someone's clearly being an idolater when they say they love God, like Jehovah, this is an issue right now. I mean, if they if they're giving allegiance like to some Buddhist shrine or something, or they or they, I don't know. You know, they know all about kind of Mary worship. Maybe they came from a Catholic background and they still do the rosary and like give offerings at some shrine to Mary or something. That's an issue. You might say you love Jehovah, but look, ultimately you're an idolater, you know? And and, and so they're, they're, each person comes from a different background, from a different culture, and deals with different things, right? But when you've discerned the spirits behind someone, so for example, the two con men, I'm going to just call them con men, who are, are 
you know, charlatans who are lording it over uh, the sheep that just don't see the wolf in these people, right? Uh, those two con men have two things in common. Both of them are so delusional as to their um, understanding of the gospel like, and, and who Jesus really is and what the truth really is that they will propagate, they, they will uh, unrepentantly continue to propagate something anti-biblical that is provable that is anti-biblical. Uh, and that ultimately is a, is pride, obviously. But that pride also manifests as something common with those two people as well, which is they still see themselves, even now, even today, as people who are greater than everybody else. They are the pastor, they're the bishop of bishops, they're the pastor of pastors, whatever else. Like, they have revelation no one else has, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's literally like, they hear from God better than anybody else. Doesn't matter about how stupid some of the things they are that they said, you know, how badly they've misquoted the Bible and taken it out of context. None of that matters. They still have the right to be above everybody else in terms of spiritual awareness and and intellect and all of that right and and those two common factors are prevalent with people who are confident that's why they're called con men right they are confident enough to put up this act that still deceives people who just have no idea what's going on and those discerning those spirits is important compared to uh you know someone who's just they just got born again they're still struggling with a bunch of stuff and like you might call them out on it you might want them to stop and maybe it's just tough love just to go listen mate like hopefully see you in a month or something but right now we can't even eat together because like you just you just need that push of seriousness to know I'm not joking around with you. You will go to hell if you continue in this, you know? And sometimes that's just enough for someone to go, wow, he's actually, like, really serious. Like, he, you know, he, he is willing to disfellowship with me over this. So, therefore, he's made it very clear that he likes me as well, but just hates what I'm doing here, and therefore I've got to knuckle down and get serious about this or go fully in back into it my choice I is mine suppose, i suppose if there are any gray areas we must we just remember that god doesn't have any gray areas we have gray areas on subjects mm -hmm. and and it's it's wise to just go to him mm -hmm. all the time because sure. he doesn't have the gray areas we do yeah Guys, I'm going to have to go in a minute. I'm, I'm very tired. It's been a very intense day for me. Nice to see you again, bro. It's nice to God see you. God bless, Fez. Thank you for leading us tonight. It was awesome. Yeah. Man. God bless. Thank you. It Great. was deep. <laughs> it got deep. Yeah. And I, well, right. that's just the way I like I it. I pray so. the best for you and, and Kinga in, your, in the situation you guys are in now. Ah, oh, thanks, mate. <laughs> bless you. Yeah. In light of what you said about the problems, Trist, does that mean you'll be moving quicker than you thought? Or? Probably. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll <laughs> see what happens. I'll, ultimately, I just don't even know what's going on. Oh, yeah, it? yeah. Go on. We can, we can move that whenever you want. I've got, got the place to put it. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. We'll be in touch about that. All right, mate. All right, everybody. Have a good night. Stay. Have a blessed day everybody, or evening, wherever good you night. are. God bless you. Good night, buddy. Good night. Bye. Bye.